Welcome back, my name is Philip and today, today we're going to talk about stars. We all know it, we go out at night, right, we take an awesome image, we edit it, but in the end we realize something is missing, something is not quite perfect and you don't really know what it is until you add stars to your image because it looks awesome. For instance, check out this image. I took this image around the corner of my house, literally just well, a while ago to be honest, uh, but I just found it, I edited it and when I looked at it, it was like, ah, something is really missing and then I added stars and I turned it to this image. I kept it subtle, but this subtle difference of actually having stars in the image turned it around completely for me. So today in Photoshop, I'm going to show you how to create stars from the scratch, creating our own star brush, adding it to the image, making it look real, and then I'm going to offer you the brush we just created within the, uh, within the tutorial for download just below the video. If you want to use it, add stars to your image, create some awesomeness. So let's don't just talk about it, let's jump into Photoshop, crush that, and let's do this. All right, so this is Photoshop. Of course you know, because that's why you're here. All right, so let's just get going and add the stars to it first. So what we're gonna do is instead of working on this image right away, we're just gonna create a new file in Photoshop first. For that, you can simply hit Command or Control N. If you do that, it's gonna bring up the new file dialog. And in our case, I'm gonna create an empty file, 1500 by 1500, resolution 400, just make it nice and large. I'm gonna click Create, and we're gonna have our nice square. Has to be a square, it's gonna make things easier. Actually, thinking about it, doesn't have to be a square. Forget that, any size you want, make it nice and large. Once I have that, I'm gonna hit Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and N on the keyboard to create a new layer, because the one we had had a white background, but we need a transparent background. And that's what we have now, which is awesome. Now, I'm gonna take a completely normal brush, right? So I wanna have something which is a very usual brush, so if I were to, maybe maybe not with white, because it's kinda not visible, but if I were just to draw on that, you'll see it's a normal brush, there's nothing special about it, it's round, and so on and so forth. What we need is exactly this, with a hardness, hardness, hardiness, a hardness of 100%, so bring your hardness up to 100%, and bring the, um, the brush size up to something which is approximately like that. Okay, once we have that, I'm just gonna set a dot. Okay, so that's the approximate size in relation to the canvas size we have here. Now, I'm gonna go to the opposite corner. I'm gonna shrink down my brush size to something way smaller, maybe something like that. I'm gonna set a dot in the opposite corner just like that. So we have a big dot and we have a small dot. Yay! So what we're gonna do is, with that selected, with that selected, no. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna go top to edit and then down to define brush preset. We click that and we give our brush a name, something like a uh, superstars, <laughs> get it? Once we have that, we hit enter, and now we can go back to our actual file where we wanna put the stars in. So let's do that. So let's select our newly made brush. If you just right click somewhere in your image, right, you're gonna end up having many stars, uh, in my case, because I did it a couple of times, but you will find the brush you just have created at the very bottom part, right? So just scroll down until you see it, and just select it, just make a nice selection. Okay, that's perfect, let's just click somewhere here. Okay, what we have to do now is we still have to adjust a little bit. If I were to draw now, you can see it's doing a little bit weird stuff, so that's not really what we wanna do. We need to adjust our brush. You can do this in two ways, either you go to the right hand side and click on the little, the little what's that even called, the brush symbol I suppose, or you go to the top left and click it there, right? Wherever you do it, it's gonna open up this particular dialog. Now here, we wanna add a couple of information or we're gonna have to change a couple of settings. First, let's start off with shape dynamic, dynamics, the shape dynamics, so we wanna increase our size jitter to maybe something like halfway, right? So just that they're varying a little bit in size, our dots. Then I wanna also add the angle jitter and I'm gonna wait, bring that up to all the way to 100%. Next, we're gonna to go to scattering and by scattering, I'm just gonna bring the scattering up to 100,000 million percent, as high as it can possibly go. And once we have done that, let's have a look what has changed in our brush. So if I draw now, you see it's gonna do random patterns, which of course in this particular case are far too large, but we can work on that, that's no issue. Now let's just shrink down our brush, first of all. Shrink it down, let me do something like, I don't even know, maybe 70 or so, maybe 90. Yeah, that could be an appropriate size. Let's make it a little bit large so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. Bring it up to 100. Might still be a little bit too small. Let's just use that. You can definitely see this in the video, right? That's perfect. Okay, so now we have that. What we see, whenever I draw now, I have far too many stars. I, I, I don't need that many stars in my image. So let's go back to the brush settings and go top to the top to brush tip shape. 
And at the bottom here, you can increase the spacing. So I'm just going to bring it up to, say, 66%, just to see how it works. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to go and take some circles here, just so going from left to the right and then back to the left again. I'm then just drawing the stuff in. I'm also going to go over the building, of course. So we're going to have stars in the building because that's fashion. Now, we're going to remove that later, so no worries at all. But for now, let's just bring that stuff in until we are happy with the amount of stars we have. I'm going to go with a lot of them right now because then you can see it way better than if I would just go with a couple of them. But of course, when you do the image yourself, just, you know, don't don't take it too far. Remember, no Aurora Borealis. We want to keep it realistic. And in my case, it might already be too much. But whatever, we're just going to do it anyway. Now that we have our images, f uh, our image full of stars, let's just remove the stars from the actual building. Hit the little layer mask symbol with the star layer selected and go back in. Let's zoom in a little bit here because we're going to have to remove them from that building. Otherwise, it's no good. Let's select normal brush while we do that. Something like a simple round brush. Make it nice and black, maybe a little bit larger to something like that. And with an opacity of 100%, if I were to have a black brush, I can now remove these stars from the actual building. They should not be here. Buildings don't have stars. Okay. So I'm just going to continue quickly to remove that here. I'm not going to be too clean, but I'm just going to make sure I get the majority of them just to make it look more or less acceptable. Okay, that's not bad. And here, okay. Cool. Fast process, nearly done. Okay, here we are. So now we have stars in the, uh, we don't have stars in the building anymore, which is uh, very useful. So, next thing we want to adapt our stars a little bit because for now they just look like white dots in the sky. And while some people might appreciate that, we can definitely have better stars than that. Now, select your layer on the right hand side, which has the stars and double click on it. If you do that, it's going to bring up this fantastic dialog. And here we want to go to outer glow and glow and set a little checkbox there. Click on the outer glow and it's going to bring up the dialog for that. Here you can give the stars, so your dots essentially, somewhat a glow around them, which should in some way resemble a color that's already in your image, right? So I can see I have, I don't know if you can see it right now, but I have a nice blue color cast in the image because it's taken at night, right? And night images are usually a bit colder. So you can just take the little eyedropper symbol. If you click on the color, you have the eyedrop, right? And you can just select the color that's already in your image. So I'm going to go with something blue and then make it a bit lighter to something like that maybe. I'm then going to hit OK. I'm going to hit OK again. And it's going to add this, let me just show you, it's going to add the, maybe not like that, a little bit of an outer glow to the dots, right? So if I switch that on and off, you can definitely see it adds that glow, which makes it so that it's not just looking like a freaking fake dot and it's super ugly. Let's zoom out of that again. I'm thinking maybe they are actually a little bit large, but whatever. We're going to go with it. We started, now we stick to it. Now what we want to do is we want to actually give them a little bit of a blur. Now if you imagine that you take these images at night, then you won't just have a quick click with the camera and you capture stars. It's going to take a while and you're going to have to do long exposure shots. And during that time, the stars are going to move. So let's make them move. Select the layer where you have the stars on, go to the top to filter, blur, and then head down to, where is it, motion blur. Here you are. Now select an angle you want. I'm going to start with 130 degrees, which is somewhere from top left to bottom right. And now we're going to have to decide what's the amount we want to blur. Now we can always use our arrow keys, just go up and down a little bit just to see what it does. I want to maybe go with something like 10 to 12. It really depends on your personal preference there, how long you want to pretend you were standing there taking the picture. Let's just go with something like 11. 11 might not be bad. Okay, yeah, 11, I can definitely live with. It doesn't look too crazy. Cool, so now that we have that, there's one more thing we have to work at. You see there, is, there are many light sources in that image, right? There's obviously a lot of light on the left-hand side. And we also have these buildings here which do emit a certain light. So we want to make sure we actually darken or remove parts of these stars from that. So with an opacity of 30% and a black brush, I'm just going to start removing the really, really bright stars from a couple of areas. As I said here on the left hand side, it's very, very bright. We don't need that many stars there. Also here, it looks like there's a bit of a, of a nice city light. So let's just remove all that stuff. So I'm just going to do that, clean this up a little bit and bring you back in just a moment. All right, and here we are. I just removed them a little bit from the surrounding area of the building, especially there where you can see there's a lot of light, right? Of course, you can feel free to do whatever you want. And in my case, I also left a couple of highlight stars in the areas which are bright. These might just be extremely bright. Uh, stars 
and that's why they are still visible even though there is light. You know, who, who can tell you otherwise, I suppose. Okay, so now that we have them in the sky, we do need them into water as well, right? Because just in the water, it's going to really complete that look of a nice sky. Now for that, I'm just going to select the layer which has my stars, hit Command or Control J for a Jaguar on the keyboard, which will duplicate that. Now the stars will become brighter automatically, not to worry. Hit Command and T on your keyboard, and then just take the upper end and drag it down. We are essentially just flipping it over, just like that. All right. Once you have that, use your arrow keys to position the stars so that the buildings and everything is still free, so that it's more or less in the same position. And once you're happy, just hit the Enter key. Now what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to have to reduce the opacity on that. Because stars in the water will never be that bright as they are in the sky, right? And let's just bring it down to something like this, maybe. That's cool. Let's zoom in and have a look how that looks. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's not bad. Even though we still have stars here, but let's just ignore those. What we're going to have to do next is, in the water, things tend to be a bit more blurred, right? Because the water is obviously moving. So we're going to have to adapt our stars for just a moment. So what we can do is, with the star selected in the water, we're going to go to Filter and then down to Blur and down back to Motion Blur. And here we're just going to blur them in the exact other direction as we had them blurred before. So instead of top, top left to bottom right, we're going to go from bottom left to top right. So for that, we're just going to put in the opposite angle, or you can just, of course, also turn that wheel here if you feel like. I'm going to uh, check now what is the appropriate distance. And distance-wise, we might go a little bit more, maybe something like this. 14 would, I think, fit nicely in our image. Let's have a look. It's going to think for a second and then it's going to blur our stars even further. And I don't think that looks bad. I kind of like what it does there. That's cool. That's absolutely cool. Now, the next thing we can do, remember how we gave it a nice outer glow? We can still do that with the stars that are in our um, sort of water area. So I'm going to go back to the color. And this time I'm going to drag the color towards the dark, right? Just to maybe something like this just to give it a little bit more of a dark glow around it, which makes it fit a little bit nicer into the water area right there. So let's sum this up, all right? So you make your brush, you pop it in the sky, you give it a nice glow, and then you just blur the hell out of it until it looks more or less like moving, like if you have a long exposure image. Then you just copy it over into the water, give it a bit more blur, because water is usually more blurred, and then you just zoom out and you are amazed by what you have created. Granted, my stars are a little bit large in the sky, but you know, you saw it properly, you know what to do now, you can do it yourself, and don't forget to download that brush out there, but uh, that, that's how you just simply add stars to any image you want. And of course, after the fact, you can always go in and reduce opacities just a little bit. Maybe in my case, I want to go a little bit lower in the sky, maybe 65% or something like that, and maybe even a little bit lower in the water, maybe something like 50% or something like that. Just a bit more subtle, still awesome. Damn, that looks good. As I said, subtle difference, but all we need to create a good night image, which still looks realistic. We don't want to take it off to the, I don't know, putting the Aurora Borealis above our image. If it's a city in Dublin in Ireland, that's not really going to work. So if you keep it subtle, you keep it real, you're going to create some awesomeness within your image within just a couple of minutes. So get that brush and do not forget, if you did like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out a lot. Other than that, get out there and take some pictures yourself. I shall see you the next time. Tutorial, vlog, we shall see. And other than that, have a good one. Bye.